Hello everyone and thanks for coming back to the channel. This is the Airblade UAV Cream Puff. Bottom plate looks to be 2.5 millimeters. Motor post to motor post is probably 115 millimeters. Powering the quad, I've got Happy Model 1103 8000 kV motors with HQ 3x2 props. This is a pyro drone canopy. Camera's the Runcam Nano 2. The VTX is the TBS Unify Pro 32 Nano. And the main board down there is the GEPRC 12 amp ESC and flight controller board. Also used a bit of that new thin light UMA grip. Toilet tank the battery sideways with a rubber band. Zip tied my battery lead and Emacs taped my wires. How I built it weighs almost 55 grams. I flew it on these GNB 3S 520 milliamp batteries, which brings you all up weight to a little over 97 grams. So as you can see there, we have a bit of wind, not a lot. Uh, I would say five to seven miles per hour, uh, probably gusts, uh, and, and really only feel that when I go up above the house. And you'll also get an opportunity to see a couple of different flights of this. And the main reason why I'm showing you a couple of different flights is there's there's something that I think is important for those that come to this channel to know specifically about flight times. First thing we should cover is the cream puff, the frame. Uh, it seems to be pretty solid. It does have the ability to mount various motors, and I'll show you the motor pattern, uh, the motor mounting hole pattern. Uh, when we get back to the desk after these flights, although that will be a little bit because I've got quite a bit of flight footage. Stick with me here because I think it's useful and I have a couple of questions that I want to pose your way as we get towards the tail end of the flight footage. Hopefully you find the flight footage interesting to watch or entertaining or at least something to do maybe. At the very least, take up some spare time if you're someone who has spare time. Uh, but I went to these Byblade props. Originally, I did try the uh, Emacs Avon uh, two and a half inch props. I think they're called Avon. Yeah. And uh, th those fly just fine. And the thing that I like about those props is they're more quiet than most of the props. And of course, with tri blades, they corner pretty well. But what I was looking for was flight time. You know, I've talked about this a few times. Long time subscribers have probably heard me say this a few too many times is that I'm trying to find combinations that you can fly pretty hard for three minutes. So if you fly like I do, you can get three minutes out of it. If you fly slower or you manage your throttle in a different way, you'll be able to get even more minutes, which I think many people are shooting for. Some people don't care. You know, they're looking for two minutes, 15 seconds, two minutes, 30 seconds, and that's just right for them. They, they, they lose their concentration. I've been trying to expand my concentration and also kind of motor combination of, of parts, components, props, and things of that nature. Typically when we go by blade, we can get more flight time out of it. There's just less resistance to the prop coming through the air. Now the motor can spin up the prop a little bit easier, even though in this case, we're actually using a longer prop. It's a three inch prop, but it has less pitch. So those things kind of help increase our efficiency. And I don't have a problem flying by blades, but I can understand why some people might be hesitant uh, and want to stick with tri blades because it does feel different in the corner and you have to manage your throttle a little bit when preparing to corner or cornering it just it just is a little bit different it requires a little bit more i don't want to say skill it requires different throttle management especially when cornering uh, but it flies nice and i think the one thing that you can depend on with the frame is that it's probably going to take a pretty sudden uh stop or otherwise known as a crash to break it and that can be a good thing for especially training purposes uh, in this particular case, I wanted to also test a few motors out. I, I had the uh, Amax motors on this. I had the, uh, well, the Happy Model motors. And I don't have the others that I had tested still out on the desk. Um, so I ended up landing on 1103s. And I think 1103s are better for these 3-inch by blades. Uh, also, if you're wanting to fly those tri-bladed uh, props from Emax the Avon, uh, also 1103 is probably going to be pretty good there. I think when you drop down to 1102, at least in my experience for how I want to fly, the motor just can't manage that prop very well. So you end up with tuning problems. Uh, I know the Tiny Hawk uh, Freestyle had uh, those tri-bladed props on it and pretty small batteries or pretty small motors. And, and it did pretty well. But, you know, for me and what I'm looking for, I just wanted a little bit more prop control. And you see we get about 3 minutes and 30 seconds. So this next flight is the same setup, same props and everything. And the reason why I'm showing this to you is I'm, I'm going to fly substantially faster. And I think if you were to listen to this with the sound off, it would be a little bit hard to tell that this flight is quite a bit faster than the other flight. And I'm showing you this because flight times vary. It depends on how you're flying. It depends on your pace. All these variables. And what we're going to find in this flight is it's only going to last a little over, I think it's 2 minutes and 20 seconds. You know, I got 3 minutes and 30 solid seconds out of the last flight. And this one is almost a minute less. So that's pretty substantial. And that's why I'm showing it. I actually thought about cutting this out and making a separate video because I get a lot of questions about flight time for things. 
And it's important for you to know that your, your flight time is going to be different than mine unless you fly just like I do, at the altitude I do, with all the combinations of environmental factors that I do. So your flight time is going to vary. It may be less if you're just a bullet train or you're hammering that throttle doing all sorts of freestyle moves. Uh, but it could be quite more. I get the feeling from the people that come to this channel and leave comments that it, it sounds like that in most cases my flight time would be at the low end and your flight time might be at the top end. But that's, that's sounding a bit egotistical and I don't like doing that. Uh, but I just want to let everybody know, especially newer pilots who may have just come to the channel, that your flight time will likely be either somewhat or a lot greater than mine. Uh, this is just how I like to fly. I like to go fast, I like to whiz around, I like to get close. This is my flying space, I know it quite well. And so I really just burn through this battery and that's why I wanted to show it to you is that your flight times are gonna be different than mine. But it also shows that this thing can be an absolute rocket. One of the things I was concerned about was with all that cross bracing on the frame, that that would increase drag, and it probably does. As a matter of fact, it's got to. But in practice, you can't necessarily feel that. It still flies like any other quad in this category, although it comes into the heavier end. And that brings me to the next point, which is this category has kind of changed all of our quads. We're, we're getting lighter with everything, whether we're running smaller uh, 1100 series motors or even going up to 1200 series motors or, or some impact thereof, because the boards, the ESCs are more capable and it's really kind of changed everything. You know, we used to shoot for a 90 gram quad dry and now we're getting 90 gram quads that are all up weight. And that's pretty substantial because now you don't have nearly as much weight. You can get more aggressive flight and more flight time. So the categories that we were flying a year ago only kind of mildly exist. This stuff has kind of taken over to where we shoot for performance. Oh, I misstated there. We came in at 243. So about 45 or 40 seconds less than the previous flight. So this is our final flight. And this is with the Avon Rush props, the Emax props that so many of you have been telling me about. And they are good props. Don't get me wrong on this. But as I've described previously, I'm trying to find combinations that will help people get more flight time, explore different props. And bio blades is one of those factors that we can use to get more flight time. They still fly well, and I like to give people examples of those things. So often, we're finding quads come with tri-blades, and tri-blades do corner better. They're easier to hold their turn or hold their line in the turn, and they just they feel a little bit different, and many people like that, including myself. You know, I've been flying those Jim Fan 2540 props for such a long time. They've been a big favorite of mine, but we're starting to see a different category, as I pre previously spoke of, and I think it's important for me to try things out so that if you come to the channel that maybe you're not interested in a product and hopefully you find the videos informative and entertaining and one of the ways they can be informative is me trying different things and not just telling you about it but actually showing you uh, oftentimes i think of these videos as their proof you know it's something that you could turn me off and you could watch it for yourself knowing which props and motor combinations i'm running at the weight that i'm running and you can gain additional information. You don't need me for that. And that's kind of been a central point of my channel is I, I don't want you to need me to tell you what to do. I think this is part of an exploration process of learning to fly quads and combinations that work well. And unfortunately, all these different things that we have to explore cost us money. So one of the ways I try to save you money is by showing you, especially in custom builds like this, different opportunities to um, find something that really speaks to you as a pilot because oftentimes we do fly better when we have a combination that really speaks to us uh, and if my flight style doesn't fit your flight style it might not be as useful it's something to consider some people uh, don't have the same style I do you like to do uh, bigger moves and I try to show you some of those bigger moves with the power uh, loops over the house and the dives and things of that nature I don't tend to do a lot of flips and flops or flips and rolls I sneak some in from time to time, uh, but you know that's just not my in my uh, my bag of tricks that I'm always thinking about. And it's not easy to work those things in all the time because I do have to stay low. As you can see from the yard, I've got a lot of trees, and even though I've trimmed the canopy up a number of years ago to about 12 or 14 feet, uh, those branches tend to hang down, and even at seven or eight feet, sometimes you can get tangled up in them. So I do have to stay low, and whenever I do those maneuvers, they tend to have to be uh, snap. 
Uh, but you can see we're coming in at the end of the flight and we get the low battery warning and we're going to get a little bit over 2 minutes and 40 seconds here. And so that's about what you expect if you build up this combination like I have. So one of my concerns with us changing this category altogether here is we oftentimes have either a 3D print canopy that's holding all of our electronics or we've got maybe a plastic molded canopy. And so if you're flying at speed and you come along and hit an immovable object, everything in there is going to be possibly damaged. Now, the only way you can get away from that is to go back to something more traditional. Uh, coming up on the channel is the Sky Stars Talon X110, which is a more traditional design. So you have carbon up top, and this gives you a little bit more camera protection and electronic uh, protection. So we're, we're very less likely because we have metal in here and carbon to destroy our electronics. And that's just kind of the risk we seem to be accepting and taking with using these pods is that you know, if you crash headlong into something, you're going to destroy it. That's just kind of the way it is. If you go light and you're looking for, for performance, that's the risk. You can go a little bit heavier and get more durability and protection for your electronics, uh, but that's a balance that you're trying to strike all the time is between performance and durability and reliability, really, too. Uh, but as far as this frame goes, you see there, it's it's got quite a bit of carbon to it, so it's not going to be in the light category, but I would expect it to be in the durable category. You're getting a look, hopefully, at the weave see if you approve of that or not and we also need to look at the motor mounting here at the bottom now you might ask me about my screws i went to ebay and i got those these are one of the few hex headed screws i could find but you see we do a, a we do have traditional uh nine by nine mounting pattern there too i'm not certain the amax motors on this one maybe i misstated that yeah i'm not certain if i did the amax motors on this one or not so don't quote me on that i apologize if i'm misleading you there I've tried those motors a couple of different times. And also, you probably noticed in the flight video, it said Frank Twig, I think. And that's just because I've had these components, this board and this camera and VTX and receiver on a couple of different frames that I've been trying out over time. Uh, so my apologies to Airblade for not using the name of their frame in the OSD. Uh, something else that you may have noticed when I was getting real aggressive in that short flight that was, what, 240 or something like that, that you may have noticed some jello. I find that jello gets worse if we don't hard mount the canopy right down here at the side. So you can see there, I'm not using any soft mounting. I've got a nylon standoff down there, and I've just... When I do this, I squeeze it together just for all I'm worth, and then I screw it in. And that helps me decrease the amount of jello that I get when using a uh, 3D printed canopy. I do think these canopies could use a bit more material. We're getting a little bit chintzy, and we end up getting a little bit of jello in there. Uh, but that's something we either have to choose that we hate or we love. And if you hate it, then you're probably looking at a carbon fiber structure up here. Uh, I don't think anybody loves jello, but. If you don't mind it so much, if it only kind of crops its head up a few times during your flight, then a 3D printed canopy will work, will work just fine. Some people ask me about my antennas and them being so short. I coil them up inside the receiver. The receiver's down there inside some heat shrink. So I shorten the length of my antenna wires inside the heat shrink right around the receiver. And then I just poke out just enough. You know, I don't need, we don't need a whole lot and I'm flying fairly close in. So these work out great. And speaking of great, these new HQ props are really nice. When I'm changing props, I'm looking for differences in how quickly the motors respond and in turn the props respond. Uh, there's also a lot to having a prop preference as to how they fly in other ways. But I think you're going to have to have more experience flying different sorts of props on motor combinations at different weight in order to identify that yourself. So if you're early in your FPV journey, that might not be such an easy task to identify whether you like a prop or not. But if you're flying tri-blades and you're looking for more flight time, I would encourage you to give these props a try. HQ has actually got a whole line meeting this category and the lighter uh, twig or hyperlight or power light category or toothpick category, what have you, that their press on uh, props also work very very well they also have a three by three prop which we've seen on the channel before which in my opinion those three by three props require a larger motor uh, i would say at the very least 1106 sort of motor uh, you can get into the 1200 series and the low 1400 series as well to give you some really good prop control on that motor combination but i'm liking the fact that this category has so many options that we can choose from and oftentimes if you can fly uh if you can only get the two and a half inch version on on here they have a two and a half inch version as well i've got a set here on my gnarly primo 
Uh, you can see those right here. They come in a nice blue. I wish these came in a blue, but apparently they do not, or at least I don't have any of the blue ones. But the red matches pretty nicely with the red wires and the red motors. But if you need a two and a half inch version of these HQ props, uh, they're also available. And I'll put links to below to the build. I know many of you also want to have like a build total. I'll do my best to find estimates on that. It might not be down to the penny uh, because prices are always changing and uh, being that accurate is difficult in this uh, space because we do have so many changes. Uh, there's oftentimes sales and promotions so you could probably build it up cheaper if you choose to. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, or otherwise, please let me know in the section down below. I appreciate your time and thanks for watching.